and the organization of modern infantry squads, medium and short-range indirect fire support is often essential. Taking the U.S. Army as an example, the primary indirect fire support for infantry squads is the M203 or M320 grenade launchers assigned to the squads. They are often referred to as the big guns in the hands of infantry soldiers and can deliver precise hits on enemy targets at distances of up to 300 meters. The 40 mm grenades they fire often blanket a large area upon detonation. However, the use of such grenade launchers is not absolute. While NATO countries often prioritize the use of grenade launchers like the U.S. Army, there are always countries that take a different approach. This includes France within NATO. Due to the design of their primary rifles, FAMAS F1 and G2, French infantry squads are unable to mount underbarrel grenade launchers. Additionally, the French military has not developed their own independent grenade launchers. So, how do French infantry squads achieve indirect fire support? Before the introduction of the M79 grenade launcher, infantry units did have a type of close-range indirect fire support, namely rifle grenades. They used a propellant from a blank cartridge fired from the rifle to propel the explosive warhead attached to the front end of the rifle towards the target. During World War II, rifle grenades had a wide variety and extensive use. For example, the rifle grenades used by the U.S. Army were known as the M7 grenade launcher and were available in two configurations, an anti-armor M9-shaped charge grenade and an anti-personnel M17 fragmentation grenade. They were attached to the M1 Garand semi-automatic rifle and launched using blank cartridges. Due to issues with the M17 grenade's trigger mechanism failing to detonate on soft ground, designers developed the M1 grenade adapter, which allowed the conversion of the MK.2 defensive fragmentation hand grenade into a powerful rifle grenade, thereby increasing reliability and ammunition interchangeability. Apart from the U.S. Army's M7 and M8 rifle grenades, other notable examples from World War II include the German 42-type grenade launcher and the Italian M28 rifle-mounted grenade launcher. However, in addition to rifle grenades, on the other side of the Pacific, there was another method of remotely projecting explosives during World War II, as employed by the Japanese. This method involved the use of grenade discharger, such as the Type 89 grenade discharger commonly used by the Japanese during the war. It allowed the use of standard hand grenades commonly carried by infantry soldiers, and with skilled operators, it could achieve an effective range of up to 400 meters. Similarly, the Soviet Union also favored this approach, although they did not refer to it as a grenade launcher, but rather as a light mortar. The Soviets considered this launcher, which used 37mm grenades, as a reduced weight version of a mortar. The Soviet launcher, known as the VM-37 light mortar, had a shovel-shaped baseplate installed at the bottom, expanding its utility or simply serving as a base when firing. From the development paths of how various armies employed high-explosive fragmentation ammunition, we can observe that they generally follow these two approaches, one that can be used directly on rifles and another that requires a separate launcher. Although the reputation of the French military was not good during World War II, they were actually pioneers in military technology before the war. They also made attempts in the field of launching high-explosive fragmentation ammunition. For example, as early as 1916, France developed a muzzle-launched rifle grenade named after its inventor, Vivien Bessieres, called the VB Rifle Grenade. At first glance, this rifle grenade did not have any special design, but it was one of the earliest attempts in history to allow the use of live ammunition to launch rifle grenades. In modern rifle grenades, in order to launch them without using blank cartridges, a structure called a grenade launcher cup is generally used to catch the projectile at the rear of the grenade. However, the VB rifle grenade did not adopt this structure. It employed a special hollow grenade design, and the projectile would fly out from the gap in the middle of the grenade after being fired with live ammunition. Of course, this was in 1916. 
By the time World War II broke out, the technological development of the French military was hindered by the surrender of the Vichy government. When they wanted to equip their MAS-36 rifles with rifle grenades, it was already after the end of the war. The French military hastily developed a modified version called the MAS-36 LG-48 to launch the French 48mm rifle grenades. It has a special ability, it could adjust its range. When the rifle grenade was fully inserted into the barrel, it had its maximum range, but as you pulled it out, the range of the grenade would gradually decrease. When the French military finally used their first rifle grenade after World War II, it was already the 1950s. By then, NATO had been established as a military alliance organization that needed to gradually standardize various specifications to make weapons and ammunition interoperable among member countries. To comply with this trend, and also because the French 48mm rifle grenades were not very practical, the French military modified the MAS-36 again. They replaced the original 48mm rifle grenade launcher with a NATO standard 22mm rifle grenade launcher. You might be familiar with the prototype of this launcher. It is the M7 grenade launcher used by the U.S. Army with the M1 Garand, as we mentioned before. The MAS-36 modified with the 22mm grenade became known as the MAS-36-51, and its grenade launcher was integrated with the muzzle. This design was then continued on the subsequent MAS-49 semi-automatic rifle. The subsequent story is the classic one that has been mentioned many times on this channel. During the Vietnam War, American soldiers found that their mortars could only reach a minimum distance of 600 meters in the jungle, which was not enough to engage targets in front of them. Although their M14 rifles had accompanying high explosive fragmentation rifle grenades, the M14 was already long and firing the rifle grenades was even more cumbersome, like using a spear. As a result, the M79, the first dedicated high-low pressure grenade launcher in human history, was born. What role did the French play in this process? In objective terms, the French played the role of complete failure, just like in World War II and the Vietnam War. In the French Indochina War, the French suffered a devastating defeat in the Battle of Dien Bien Phu, which forced them to withdraw from Vietnam. The Vietnam War directly influenced the development of grenade launchers, but the French were not involved. By the time the Vietnam War ended in the 1970s, the U.S. military had already equipped itself with the M203, a 40mm grenade launcher. However, due to French President Charles de Gaulle's withdrawal from NATO in 1966, the innovative infantry weapon technology of the 40mm grenade launcher was not shared with France. At this time, the French military, which had no intention of fighting and lacked any battles to engage in, was still using their MAS-49 semi-automatic rifles with NATO standard 22mm rifle grenades. The stagnation of French small arms development resulting from the failure in the French Indochina War directly impacted the choice of French grenade launchers. In the 1970s, a trend of small-caliber weapons emerged, and NATO collectively transitioned to the 5.56 by 45 mm NATO standard small-caliber rifle cartridge. Thus, France also adopted the 5.56 NATO standard, and in 1978, the French military fully switched to the iconic 5.56 mm FAMAS assault rifle, which became a defining feature of the French military for a long time. However, despite being a product of the NATO standard, the FAMAS did not have the capability to fire 40mm high-low pressure grenades. The FAMAS continued to use the NATO standard 22mm rifle grenades and the traditional grenade launching system with a gas seal ring on the barrel. This, however, brought new problems. Firstly, the effective range of the rifle grenades was too short. The French APA V40, a 40mm rifle grenade used by the French military, had a maximum range of only 300 meters, falling short of the M203 grenade launcher's 400 meter range. Secondly, the APA V40's technology was outdated. It was the first generation of NATO standard rifle grenades developed by France after joining NATO in 1956, and its performance could only be described as barely sufficient. 
Lastly, the APA V40 had significant recoil, which was not suitable for the lightweight farmer's rifle. In fact, inexperienced shooters would often be knocked off their feet by the recoil when firing the APA V40 in a standing position. Even experienced shooters would struggle with the recoil. In conclusion, the APA V40 was virtually ineffective in combat, and the French military was in urgent need of a reliable indirect fire support weapon within infantry squads. When the 1990s arrived, the French infantry units finally received new indirect fire weapons to celebrate. But instead of the eagerly anticipated 40mm underbarrel grenade launcher, they obtained something that entered service in the 90s. A launcher that resembled the 51mm grenade discharger used by the Japanese during World War II. It was called the LGLMLE F1. But its firing principle was completely different from the World War II Japanese launcher. The F1 launcher employed a firing principle known as FlyK. The general working process of this firing principle is as follows. The projectile contains a closed metal tube with propellant inside it. At the rear of the propellant, there is a piston fused with a primer. Before firing the projectile, it is inserted into the launcher tube, and simultaneously, another guide rod fused with a firing mechanism is inserted into the internal metal tube of the projectile. When the shooter fires the launcher, the propellant ignites, and the resulting gas rapidly expands, pushing the piston downward. However, the piston is blocked by the guide rod and cannot move, so it pushes the projectile forward instead. Eventually, the piston gets wedged in the narrow tail of the metal tube, creating a gas seal. This reduces noise, eliminates flash, smoke, and decreases heat signature. Using the FlyK firing principle, the LGI MLE F1 launcher produces a firing noise of only 100 decibels at a distance of 52 meters, which is similar to the noise produced by most suppressed firearms firing supersonic ammunition. Furthermore, it has a maximum effective range of 675 meters, much greater than the 400 meter range of the 40 mm low velocity grenades. The LGI launcher offers various types of ammunition, including high explosive, smoke, illumination, and infrared illumination rounds, catering to the diverse needs of the French infantry squads. However, the LGI launcher also has its inherent drawbacks. As an ultralight mortar, its loading weight reaches 4.8 kilograms. Compared to the current U.S. military M203 launcher weighing 1.36 kilograms and the M320 weighing 1.5 kilograms, the LGI launcher is a true physical burden. So why did the French equip their infantry squads with a light mortar in the late 20th century instead of using traditional underbarrel grenade launchers? According to the French military's theory, the LGI's effective range of up to 600 meters allows it to engage targets beyond the direct firing range of most infantry small arms. When a French infantry squad needs to assault a typical fortified position, the LGI gunner can find cover behind an obstacle that bullets cannot penetrate, accurately measure the distance, aim, and use smoke to provide cover for friendly units or employ high explosive rounds to engage enemy forces. In contrast, if the squad had an underbarrel grenade launcher, the grenadier would have to simultaneously accompany the infantry squad in the assault, evade enemy fire, and hurriedly launch smoke or grenades. The French military considers this type of combat to be highly inefficient. Therefore, this is the primary reason why the French military was determined to introduce a squad's level lightweight mortar in the 1990s. However, in recent years, the French military's stubbornness seems to have loosened. After rejoining NATO in 2009, the French military, especially its infantry units, received a series of upgrades. First, the French decided to replace their FAMAS rifles with the French version of the HK416A5, known as the HK416F. After the transition to the HK416F was complete, it appeared that the LGI MLE F1 had reached the end of its service life. Along with the procurement of 93,080 HK416 F rifles, the French military also acquired 10,767 GLM 40mm grenade launchers, which they referred to as the HK269F. 
It seems that the French military is fully embracing the convenience of the 40mm low-velocity grenades, marking a significant change after 60 years.